In this video, we'll talk about the third example to understand cytoplasmic inheritance, and that is shell coiling in snails. The snail in which this shell coiling was studied was Limnia peregra, in which this shell coiling was studied. Now, we will give it a name after we discuss few more things. In snails, the shell coiling is again decided by a protein which is present in the cytoplasm of the gamete. And as we already know that the cytoplasm comes only from the female gamete. In snails, there are two types of shell coilings. One is known as dextral. Dextral is right-handed or clockwise. So this is right-handed or clockwise. If the shell moves clockwise, that means if we look at the shell from the top and it shows that coiling, if it goes on the right side, right-hand side or clockwise manner, then it is known as dextral. And for this type of coiling, the gene responsible is dominant so whether it is capital D and capital D or heterozygous, this condition is responsible for dextral coiling. The second type of coiling is known as sinistral, which is the recessive. That means the coiling is left-handed or anti-clockwise or anti-clockwise. That means if we see it from the top, the coil or the turn takes towards the left hand side. Sinistral is recessive and the genes which we write are the lowercase t, uh, sorry, lowercase d or smaller d. So now there are two things. One, dextral coiling which is controlled by the capital D and sinistral which is a recessive one. So we need a condition like two small d's. If a dextral female, if we are talking of a pure dextral female, produces the eggs. These eggs will have capital D in the nucleus and because of this D in the body, this D is responsible for formation of a protein which is present in the cytoplasm. If we take a sinistral female, Again, sinistral female, we are talking about only females first so that we understand what is coming from the females. Then, the eggs produced by this female would have in the nucleus, the recessive and in the cytoplasm, no protein. This part is only from the parent to egg formation. Now, to understand this, let us take a couple of crosses and we can see how this inheritance is taking place. We'll start with normal, dextral, male, pure dextral male crossed with sinistral female. Now, this dextral male will produce a male gamete having capital D and this sinistral female will produce an egg having small d or recessive d but the cytoplasm is without proteins and why those proteins are not there because her genetic makeup was such that there was no dominant gene. When this male gamete and this female gamete they fuse then the zygote which is formed will have capital D from the male gamete and small d from the female gamete and the cytoplasm from the female gamete. So this cytoplasm has no protein. So in this case, in spite of having this D, capital D, this snail will show sinistral coiling. Now, how is that possible? Now, why this shell, uh, the snail is showing sinistral? Because for shell coiling, 
the protein which is required should be present in the cytoplasm. If the female parent or the mother does not give that protein in the eggs to the offspring, then the shell coiling will be sinister. Now, if this is a female and if she produces eggs, she will produce this protein in the cytoplasm. So, whenever we talk of shell coiling, we have to consider the offspring and the mother. So, this, off, this individual, if is a female and if she produces the eggs, then the eggs would have that protein. Now, let us talk about this one. So, if we see this cross in our funeral square, the male gametes will have D and D and the female gametes will have small d and small d. So all offsprings are going to be capital D small d, capital D small d, heterozygous and all four are going to be sinistral. What is the reason for them being sinistral? Because they did not receive the protein from the female gamete or protein from their mother. That is why. That means shell coiling of this generation is pre-decided. It is decided whether the mother is having or producing that protein in the egg or not. And that is why we said we will give it another name. The other name is it is known as predetermination. That means what type of shell coiling the offsprings show is pre-decided by the mother. If mother is producing those proteins, then the offsprings will have that coiling, that is dextra. And if the mother is not producing the proteins, the shell coiling is going to be sinister. Now, we'll continue with this. This is our parent generation. This is F1. If F1 members are crossed, that means we are taking, say, these individuals. One, this all four are sinistral. So we are taking sinistral female crossed with sinistral male from F1. Now, in F2, what is going to happen? So let me write it here. So all four of these are sinistral. In F2, we are trying to get to see this is F2 that we are talking of. In F2, the offsprings which are crossed are sinistral female with sinistral male, sinistral male from F1. Now, the gametes produced by this female will be D and small d. Here, capital D and small d. Let us not worry about what type of gene is coming into the offspring. We need to be worried or we need to be concerned about what is coming from the cytoplasm of the female. Will this female produce that protein in her lifetime? The answer is yes, because she has a dominant D. And when this female produces eggs, the eggs will bring that protein. So here, when we say genotype is do uh, pure homozygous dominant, here heterozygous, here heterozygous, and this is recessive. So what would be the shell coiling in these four offsprings? This individual or this progeny when was formed, it received the egg from the mother and the egg had protein and this zygote got this protein, this zygote when formed got this protein, same here and same here. So all four are going to be dextra. This individual, the last one, is having both recessive genes but its shell coiling was decided before the offspring is formed. How is it decided? If the mother or the female parent has produced that protein in the egg or not. 
if this female dextral female produces an offspring so let us go to next generation we are taking this as female and let us take this male from f2 so this female is dextral so we are talking of a dextral female a dextral female with the genotype small d small d if we cross this with a dextral again all four are dextral so dextral male with capital d and capital d what are we going to get here is this female producing the proteins in its lifetime the answer is no because this female is not having dominant d but then how come its shell was dextral because her mother had produced that protein but if she gives rise to offsprings her offsprings are going to have synestra so in this case she produces small d and the male produces capital d containing gametes so here all are going to be heterozygous and all are going to be synestral because this female though she is dextral because of her mother her offsprings are synestral because of her genotype because she could not prepare that protein in her eggs so all these are going to be synestral this is very important to understand that shell coiling of a progeny is decided by what is present in the cytoplasm of the egg that means previous generation and that cytoplasm is coming from the mother or in other words if we have to say that shell coiling is predecided what will be the coiling of the shell of the offsprings which are produced or which will be produced in f1 depends on which type of egg the mother produces if those eggs have protein the offsprings will have dextral coiling if the egg is without protein in spite of having dominant d the offsprings will have synestral coiling and that is why we use the term predetermination so though it is cytoplasm but it is decided before the progeny is actually formed it is decided at the level of gamete formation of the female parent so in cytoplasmic inheritance we took three examples one was the first one was of mirabilis and in mirabilis we talked of plastid inheritance that is mira mirabilis jalpa we talked of plastid inheritance and this inheritance was given by corens it was explained by corens the second which we took was inheritance of kappa particles that was in paramecia in paramecia and this was given by sonebon third is this one and there is one more that is the fourth one that is male sterility in maize male sterility in z maize z maize is the regular maize that we are talking of and this this was explained by rhodes r h o d e x rhodes now these kind of plants the male sterile plants are important for plant breeding program if you remember the steps of plant breeding there is one step which is known as emasculation where we remove the male gamete producing part that is anther because we do not want any pollen grain to fall on the stigma these plants are anyway sterile for the male gamete the male sterile plant so here we don't have to go for that step of emasculation so these four examples are very important whenever we talk of cytoplasmic inheritance